Welcome back. Uh, my name is Speaker uh, Jim Amon, and this is uh, the award-winning show, Then and Now. We continue our conversation with Deputy Speaker Bruce Morris, who is running for mayor of the great city of Norwalk, and uh, someone that uh, I certainly am learning a lot from here in our last couple conversations. Um, Bruce, we talked about housing, we talked about education, and we started talking a little bit also about, you know, standing up uh, and fighting for things you believe in. You know, being a speaker, what I used to enjoy most is when we were behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Now, I know when people hear that because they hear all the behind closed doors, but the reality is that's where a lot of the work is done. It's where all of us come together as a full caucus and we have an open dialogue. Sometimes the dialogue, as you know, can be very rough. But we're a family in there. That's right. And as a family, we have to make decisions together. We have to be as fair to as many people as we can. But educating one another on our districts and our needs is the most important. Can you elaborate uh, once again on what happened uh, during the last session and what happened in the in the caucus? Okay. I think it's... It'd be interesting for the viewers to know. Yeah, very good, Mr. Speaker. So, um, you know, for the longest time, as a caucus, uh, for, for decades, uh, our primary issues focused around education, you know, making sure we had educational equity and judicial reforms, because that's where we had so much injustice. It was always those two things. Right. But going to that last session, we realized, particularly with the recession of 2008, that this was a time for the state of Connecticut to do things differently, uh, because everyone was losing. And our biggest concern was, hey, listen, you know, we need to focus on economic equity because a lot of our problems the taxpayers are worrying about cutting social services and all these things that would hurt our communities the most. And our position was, listen, we've never been empowered. Uh, we don't want to be in a position where people are giving a, a, a hand out. We want to hand up. So a third leg to the stool became important, which was called economic equity. Excellent. Unfortunately, um, people didn't want to move down that way. So it was those private conversations when you have with the full caucus, with the speaker, the leadership, to say, listen, this is this important to us, that you're going to call these bills. It needs to happen. You know what? The other side is willing to, willing to filibuster for whatever is important to them. We will filibuster. We will do this. Because this is the real answer for the state of Connecticut. One of those things that was on the table for economic equity was the fact that the state of Connecticut spends billions, billions of dollars uh, in development all over the state but sends billions to cities, and that money was exempt from what's called a small business set-aside. Mm. America's business, Connecticut's business, is business. But women, minority businesses, disadvantaged businesses, do not, were not full stakeholders in that discussion. So we decided, we're, we're going to stop until you're going to deal with our excessive police force bill, which was important to us. We're going to deal with this economic equity piece. We want our state set-asides. And we did that. So that's what happens behind the scenes for people to know. The conversations happen where there may be one side is saying no, 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 and we had to put our foot down. But that segues into where we are right now and why, again, it's so important that I am running for mayor. And one of the reasons I'm running, because you know what? I, we got that done two years ago, actually going on three years ago now. The city of Norwalk, its plan, its vision for what it's doing for small businesses, minority and women businesses, it isn't good to say, well, the Chamber of Commerce has score and the Chamber of Commerce is doing something. Cities need to be more deliberate. I, I actually gave them the tool. I said, you've got to do this. You must do this. Me, I will make certain the cities do this. In fact, we put aside $25 million worth of bonding, $5 million for a revolving loan fund for small and minority and women-owned businesses. I brought, the, I brought the businesses that will actually fund this to the city of Norwalk. I am proactive in what I do. Now, this segues into the direction for the city of Norwalk because it's about empowering, lifting people out of power, poverty. Sometimes the best way to get affordable housing is to raise the wages of the people who are working. So we're doing over a billion dollars worth of development. I've got a plan that's called Norwalk First. All right? Other cities do this. Right now, we, we, just, we just do things to raise a grand list and we figure property, taxes, property taxpayers, you're going to be happy. No, let's go to my plan. You know what? You're going to set aside a certain amount of that work. It's going to be for businesses that are locally owned, Norwalk-based businesses, small businesses, women-owned businesses. We have more single moms that certainly could run a business today and need that opportunity to lift up their standard of living. That helps to lift up a standard of living for those kids. 
and it will give better outcomes for them in school. Lift up our minority businesses that are sitting there just barely squabbling by. Give them joint ventures. These are people that want to work. The money now stays in the city of Norwalk. Workforce development, because small growth economic development is an actual model that I believe in. You have to take, you have to consider business development, workforce development. So we'll do the same thing with your workforce. Preferential treatment for people who live in the city of Norwalk to work on these jobs. And the biggest thing is, it all has to do with how does this affect the quality of life. You consider all three of those things. That's my Norwalk First plan. It is one that takes what I've learned in the state. It takes the tools that I know that are in the state. I know where to tap in to get the money. I don't have to send someone else to go get it for us. I am the guy. And I've got that vision. And I think that the vision and the experience is so important. Um, this isn't to knock anybody uh, in political office. Um, but when you have the experience of being able to deal with leaders in the state, whether they be Democrat or Republican, uh, and you've had that sort of respect up in Harford. When you can take that, um, I would say, opportunity of being a leader, uh, an opportunity of being a legislator, and then bring that back home and run for mayor. And you've also served on the municipal level. You combine those two, nobody, I think, could match you as far as uh, who's running now of having that sort of experience. Speaker, you said it very well. I am the only candidate who can say that, you know what, I, I've been a leader. I've actually initiated oh, many things I've talked about today. I've been the initiator of. Uh, not, the, not the current leadership. But they, they do the best that they can do. But how many things have already been started that they're just continuing on and not working well and there's been no change? Bruce Morris has demonstrated that I'm a change agent. I don't take a look at things that are status quo and say they're okay. I find out where it's leaving someone out. What can position us better for 10 years from now? So I am that leader. I've, I've led our Black and Puerto Rican caucus. And when I did that, we reached across the aisle. Much, many of the, much of the legislation I've gotten done is nonpartisan. Yes, I'm a Democrat, but I reached across the aisle with everything. Let me just add to that. And, and we need new leadership now. Yeah, you're right. And let me tell you, uh, and I know we're getting close to the closing here, but the reality is... When you go and you talk to people, I guess uh, something's coming to my head right now. I was blind and now I see. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is if we all just take the time to listen to one another. Yes. And I've done it a thousand times, not understanding where a legislator's coming from. Then sit down with that legislator and I go, ah, I get it. I get it. And that's what's important, Bruce. So if you want to say a couple of closing statements on that, we'd love to hear that. Well, and. Well, well, I'm, I'm glad I'm good, and, I, and I, I thank you for that. And that's why I'm, I'm so proud of the fact that I'm Deputy Speaker of the House and have the respect that comes with that. Uh, and I thank God that I'm respected by both sides of the aisle. People come to me all the time and say, you know so well, because they know that I listen. Right now, we have a government that does not listen. Uh, we have common council members that are voting on issues, and they're publicly saying, gee, you want me to uh, raise $500,000 for an architect for schools? I don't even have the information, and they're forcing it through. That isn't good government. That's poor leadership. I'm not that kind of leader. I'm inclusive. I believe all stakeholders need to be involved. In Norwalk, vote for me. Your voices will be heard. Your, your views will be heard. We'll come together in consensus of what gets us towards a Norwalk that we all believe in. We're a diverse city. I want to fight for Cranberry, Silvermine with his great arts guild. I want to build up our, our Wall Street area, make this all this interconnectivity with our TOD, our South Norwalk. I'm, I'm for the entire city of Norwalk. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Bruce. And I have to tell you that you know, I've gone to Norwalk many times over the last, well, 15 years. And uh, I think the city of Norwalk is a wonderful city. But I must tell you that just like uh, when you see uh, something that looks good, you can make it better. And I know that this uh, particular leader, someone that I serve with, someone that I admire, someone who I, family I know, will do a great job for uh, for the city of Norwalk as their mayor. I hope you come out November 7th and vote. Please do. Your vote means something. It's important that you vote. I want to see you vote for uh, Deputy Speaker Morris, but we want you to give out. This is a privilege as an American citizen to vote. And don't say that your vote doesn't count. Mm. It does. And if you come out to vote, and if you tell your friends to come and support Representative Morris, you will have 
Bruce Morris as your next mayor. Thank you so much again for tuning in to see them. And now, I'm Speaker Jim Amon. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.